Guys, welcome back to the 300 PRC project. This rifle has been a ton of fun to shoot. It is a phenomenal long range cartridge. In this video, I'm quickly gonna give you an overview of the build, how we got here. I'm gonna be doing a lot of shooting in this video. We've got, I think, 27 rounds to try and hit steel beyond 1.3 kilometers. If we can go beyond that, that would be mission accomplished. The breeze is starting to push from the front here. We're gonna do this all, no kestrel, it's gonna be Let's go. I've got some basic dope in my ballistic app on my phone. We're going to start at 880 meters. I've just finished double checking the zero. It was absolutely on the money since the previous time I shot it. So without further ado, let's shoot some steel at distance. I'm going to fire up my little spotting scope with the GoPro and hopefully get us some nice vapor trail. With that said, let's do some shooting, shall we? Okay, so our first target is a full-size Ipsic. Okay, it's essentially a torso-shaped target. There is no rounds on it. I'm going to quickly set my parallax. So 851 meters. I need to dial 7 MRAD, so 7 mil, 7.1. We're going to single load the sucker. I'm shooting brand new Lapua brass with 220 grain Lapua Sinars. I'm going to do about a 0.3 wind hold to from the left and see what happens here okay so there was no wind we hit straight in line with where we held and we hit about a half a mil high so i'm going to take off 0.5 and re-engage this target now our strategy is going to be essentially hit to move and we'll see how far we can go with this very very important to spot our own trace here this should be high on the torso okay that is our first impact we hit a little on the low side i'm going to add two more clicks but we're going to consider that a hit it's going to re-engage the wind's actually pushing me a little bit to the right it's very swirly I mean, the wind's actually pushing me to the left, excuse me. What a beautiful sound. Okay, we're going to call that good. Now, we're going to move to our next target, which is going to be 1,124 meters. Now, as you guys would have seen, we had a little bit of dope issues. So, our previous distance was 851, and we actually only needed to dial... 6.8 so i'm going to do a quick adjustment here since we know the bc of my bullet i'm going to true the speed a little bit as this is a new rifle i didn't chronograph it this morning <sighs> so i'm going to true my speed so our elevation we needed was 6.8 i'm going to recalculate and it's saying my speeds come up by about 35 feet per second now we're at 2827 i'm going to say use the speed calculate now our next distance, 1,124, 1,124 equals 10.6. We're gonna dial our 10.6 on. Now we're going on to the second revolution of the Strike Eagle, so 10.6. We're gonna realign the spotting scope. And now we're gonna see if we can hit that in, let's say two or three rounds. I have actually hit this distance before with this rifle with no low development, but the conditions were a little bit better. Um, with this mic, I'm not sure if you guys will hear the wind, but there is a little bit of drift. It's actually drifting this way now, so might make things a little bit easier. I'm gonna favor the right edge of that plate and hopefully we'll be on the money. Okay, let's readjust, find our target. I'm gonna come up one or two clicks here with the sky pod just from a comfort point of view. There we go. I was a little bit compromised on my previous shooting position. Now, a lot of times guys ask, why do we single load our rifles like this when we're shooting long range? Because it depends how you spec your chassis system, what kind of mags you can run. But on this 300 PRC, I specifically adjusted my total overall length of my projectile of my loaded round to be able to still feed of this MDT 300 Win Mag 3.715 cartridge overall length magazine let's make sure that is clicked in and then obviously if you're not familiar with the ESS platform that we have on this rifle I think this is still my favorite chassis MDT Max okay so we have a little bit of conditions I can see the Mirage coming 
over. So I'm actually going to go, I think I might have to go 0.5 as a wind call, 0.5 right, and let's see what we got. We have to be so diligent to watch our trace here. Oh, here we go. First round hit, 1.1 kilometers. We're gonna call that good and move straight on to the next one. <laughs> yes, baby. Man, it's satisfying to ring steel. I hope you guys hear the ding on my little microphone here. Um, yeah, yes, baby. <laughs> Woo! Okay, our next distance is gonna be 1336 I had a little trouble ranging this I'm gonna go three rounds at this distance just because I'm not a hundred percent sure what this distance actually is it's saying my come up is 14.5 so we're gonna add that to the equation strike eagle still has a little bit to go before we're gonna start running out of elevation on this turret I'm gonna readjust the spotting scope find that target that is looking mighty far and uh, see if we can gauge that successfully this will officially be the furthest that I've ever shot this rifle to. So our wind call, I think now what we're going to do, knowing what we know now, we're going to go at least a 0.7 from the right. I have dialed my elevation in. One of the shortcomings of the Hawa platform is the stock trigger. It, every time it feels like my safety is on. A little bit more wind, I'm going to go 0 0.8. Huh. So this is where it starts getting tricky. I did not see any splash. There's a large rock to the right of that target. I'm thinking I'm not in the rock because I didn't see splash. I'm going to go on the assumption that I went off the left. I'm going to add a little bit of wind to that because I might have been just off the left and re-engage. Okay, I saw that land. My wind call is good. I think I hit the post and I'm a little bit low. I'm going to come up about four clicks. Okay, <clears throat> and now we're going to have to start single loading this. And I'm going to have to be at about 1.2 for wind. And hopefully we get this done in three. Again, I'm unsure exactly of this distance. Might explain why we're a little bit low. Huh. That sailed over the top. My three clicks might have been a little bit aggressive. Uh, and our wind call, I think the wind died on us. Okay, we're going to go. We're close. We've got ammo. Okay, we didn't get it done in three. We're gonna try two more. That was just over the top. Interesting, so now we're back to our initial dial. But I wouldn't call it money. Okay, I thought that might have nicked the plate, but we did not. What I'm gonna do now, I am gonna be very brave and move on to an extended range and see if we can hit 2,000 meters, which would be the furthest I've ever shot in my life. If you guys wanna try that, leave a like if you think we should try that. Okay, we're gonna try it, thanks. Now, something to note is before we hit the next shot, first of all, if you like long range shooting and you want to learn about long range shooting, please make sure you're subscribed. This video is also brought to us by MDT Sporting Goods, maker of the beautiful MDT chassis that this Hawa is housed in. Phenomenal increase in accuracy just by going from that synthetic stock that this thing ships with. Hello? Piece of garbage stock. And I think I called it a bad word in the first video, but I mean, it's nowhere near what that's doing. This, I have the ability to add some weights. I can run the extended five round magazine. Yeah, just way more modular running the Skypod. Now, what I was gonna say 
is at this next distance, 2,045 meters, not only is this the furthest that I've ever tried to engage a target, this bullet that I'm shooting at the speed that I'm shooting at is transonic about 700 meters before we're gonna hit our target. Now, what that means is when the bullet transitions from supersonic to transonic back through that sound barrier, weird things start to happen and the bullet might become unpredictable. So our chances of success here is very low, but we're gonna give it a whirl nonetheless. Place your bets in the comments below. Are we gonna get this done or not? Um, I'm not too optimistic, to be quite honest. <laughs> this is very far. Now, in an ideal world, I'd like to shoot heavier grain projectiles in this sucker, but being a sort of budget build, I wanted to stick to budget components and hence the 220 grain Lapua bullets. Now, guys have been running the 245 grain burger very successfully, and ideally that is kind of what you want to be shooting in a rifle of this cartridge. So with that being said, let's try to do 2000 meters. If we don't hit it, I'm gonna shoot the last three rounds at a closer distance at steel, just for fun, because we never want to end by missing targets. I feel like that is a bad way to end any range session. You want to be smashing steel when you pack your rifle in the rifle bag. So let's reserve three rounds for shooting our first target after we're done at the 2000 meter mark. Okay, boys and girls, now our come up for this ridiculous distance is 35 MRAD. So, dialing to the next zero gives us 20. Then I'm gonna start running out of elevation around about here. So I'm gonna go 22 dialed on, which means I need to hold an additional 13.2. So let's go 22.2 and that means I need to find another 13 mil in my reticle. Now I do not have that, I've got 10. So what we're gonna need to do here, we're gonna, gonna aim for a bush. So I'm gonna try shoot one, see where it lands, try get a reference point of where we can aim on the bush. And this is just another factor as to why this shot is gonna be ridiculously difficult. Okay. <laughs> here we go. What could possibly go wrong? Okay. Alrighty, folks. 22 dialed in, I'm gonna just measure with my reticle where sort of three mil is. It's round about there, so I have to put my 10 on that spot round about there. And let's see what, what happens. Oh, it's gonna make this difficult is the wind. So I'm gonna start actually dialing in wind. We're gonna be at least two MRAD from the right. Let's see how we go, if we can see the sucker land somewhere. The entire target is covered by the thick section in my reticle. I'm gonna go there. Well, that was uneventful, nothing. So if we shoot five rounds and we don't see anything, we're gonna call this. Otherwise we're literally just wasting ammo here. I'm gonna go 10 on the money and see what happens. Okay, that was very ambitious, <laughs> but we didn't get it done. I'm not gonna waste this ammo trying to hit steel at that distance. It is, um, yeah, we're, we're just gonna end up wasting ammo. Now the danger is here, people will forget to dial back to their actual zero, which could easily happen. Hey, let's do some double taps at this 800 target. I think that'll be fun. This uh, Ipsic, let's try, slap some double taps on there with the PRC. Okay, I'm putting two rounds in the mag. This is 851 meters, 300 PRC, double taps. So I'm gonna slap one round, wreck the bolt, and try and get another one on target as soon as possible. So the target is about the size of a human torso. 
Right, here we go. Boom, boom! <laughs> you can do double taps with large Magnum cartridges. Let's do that again. Okay, I got two rounds. Again, our target at 851. Slow and steady, close the bolt. I need to come off the bolt quicker if I want to double tap this fast. Man, love the sound of double taps in the morning. <laughs> For reference, that target is a full size IP6, so AKA around about the size of a torso at what, 900 yards? Last two rounds, 300 PRC, how a project. What shall we do? Yeah, let's see if we can hit that thing in the head. Just off the left of the head that I load around. No, oh, I did. <sighs> I don't want to miss this last round, so I'm going to go center mass. This will be my last round of this rifle ever. Boom! Wow. So that's it. Our 300 PRC is an absolute steel smashing machine at distance. This was a ton of fun, this project for me. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Howard rifles. My only gripe with these from the factory is that the factory trigger is pretty terrible. Obviously the stock that it ships with is not great either. I did dial my scope back to zero, that's sort of just my systems check. But in this ESS, with a little bit of weight, an arc rail to, you know, give some modularity that I can slide this bipod back and forth. Sometimes when you're shooting far, it's actually advantageous to have your bipod a little bit back. Then you wouldn't have to sort of reach around and lift the rifle up like I had to, to adjust the bipod. So that's something worth noting. I actually dropped the ball on that a little bit. But the ability to set this up for your profile, manipulate the length of pull, because as I said in my eye relief video, which if you haven't seen that, I'm gonna link that for you guys at the end. Your ability to put your face on the rifle, whether you're just doing sort of prone long range like we were doing today, or whether you're doing hunting or precision rifle, the fact that your rifle has to be set up perfectly for you makes this so much easier. I could see these last few shots at the back there, it arcs out of my field of view, so I can't see that. But this sort of 800, 900 yard shot, I was seeing the bullets flying towards the target. It was super, super satisfying. I hope on the little spotting scope with the GoPro that we were able to film that. I really hope we were. But it was super, super cool and super easy for me to correct for wind just because I was actually able to see my own bullets in flight, which is a vital skill to master. Now, it does help that I'm shooting these at about 2,800 feet per second because a slower bullet is inherently easier to see in flight. But this overall package absolutely hammers. I've got a bunch of mates who own these, the Hawa 300 PRCs. There's one little asterisk on my one specifically. I ended up getting the 24 inch model where I wish it was the 26 but again I got this rifle solely for the purpose of doing a YouTube sort of project with it for you guys so all of the videos on this series should be in a playlist I must say on my one video I watched it this morning just before filming this goodness gracious I was like a chameleon on a lucky packet I was all over the place with that video so apologies for that I've, man I must have had too much coffee that day but uh, this has been a super fun series this is going to one of our subscribers on the channel Marco um, so Marco I wish you all the best with this rifle it is going to serve you absolutely fantastically over its lifetime barrel life with these are pretty good if you're in the market for a 30 caliber rifle that you want to do long range shooting with or you know you want to buy a 300 Win Mag. I wouldn't buy a 300 Win Mag nowadays. This is the modern version of a 300 Win Mag. You can do everything a 300 Win Mag can do and more with sort of a better design SAMI chamber that allows you to seat higher BC, heavier, longer 30 caliber bullets 
in the Sami spec chamber, and that was the shortcoming with the 300 Win Mag. You know, it's a wonderful cartridge, but if you're running a Sami spec chamber, you have to push these long VLD bullets quite a bit into your case, and that's really not optimal for performance. So, allowing us to seat these out longer, I would say. The 300 PRC is definitely a buy, whether you end up getting it in a Hauer platform or whatever platform you get. Phenomenal cartridge. I had a ton of fun putting this series together. If you enjoyed this series, I used my own funds to buy this rifle and I can truly give you my honest opinion on that. So if there are other rifles you wanna see me review, make sure you leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get my hands on them. There are some rifles that I have in the pipeline. I just haven't been able to gain access to them, but we have some fun projects planned for the rest of this year as well as for next year. We've got some pretty ambitious goals for next year, but I'm hoping to do more sort of series like this as it's something that I thoroughly enjoy and I know you guys enjoy that too. With that said, I have linked my iRelief video over here and I've linked the playlist for all the 300 PRC videos over here. Thank you guys for watching, God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.